Hello, beautiful Scorpios. Happy New Year. Happy 2020 to you. These are going to be uh, your messages for the month of January or thereabouts. Though keep in mind that it's, I can't fit energies in a box. Some of this makes sense to you right away. It may already have happened. For some of you, it's going to make sense three months later. For some of you, three weeks later. So uh, listen to it again, if you will, because chances are it'll make sense to you. Uh, my name is Joanna. Welcome to Team Joanna, Joanna the Medium. I am happy if you are returning, very much so. If you are new, I hope you like what you see and you continue to stay. And um, let me state my, inten state my intention, which is very important for me to do each and every single time. And I'll explain the reason why. My intention is to provide information to you that I receive from spirit. And uh, the intention of that intention is to see your own value. In other words, my intention is to help you understand who you really are underneath this thing we call our mind and our body. And that with it comes the ability to see things very, very differently and therefore have a change of perspective. When we change of perspective, we shift from which angle we see. And the moment we shift from which angle we see, we see something different. All right. So it has the potential to absolutely shift your entire life going forward. But I'm not doing the shifting for you. You are. Uh, all I'm doing is I'm sharing information that is being imparted on me. And I give it my own humanly language to present it to you. What you do with it is entirely up to you. But that is my intention. Okay, what I'm being asked to say is this. What is your intention when you listen to something like this? If, if you have no intent, and this is interesting for me, Joanna, and this puts a new perspective for me. So next time I listen to a video, I'm going to say, what do I get? want to get from it? And so what is your intention from these messages? Is your intention, I don't know. Well, if your intention is, I don't know, then how will you know that you have found something? You won't know. You won't be able to identify it because you don't know what you're looking for. So you may get nothing, but it's not that there is nothing there for you to get from this. It's because you're not looking or you don't know what you're looking for. Now that is a big ass metaphor for life in general. And some of you will rewind this and you'll hear it several times and you'll think about it and it'll go, yeah, of course it makes perfect sense. So I feel, because some of you are rewinding it and I think I will as well. As I'm channeling, I don't hear things exactly. It's kind of weird. So what's your intention with this, with listening to this post, if you will? Because I just gave you my intention. And based on what your intention is, notice what you gain, what you get from these messages, okay? I saw an energy of birth, energy of opulence, energy of growth. Now, for those of you who have given birth, generally speaking, not always, generally speaking, it's not an overly comfortable process, the, in, the process of actually giving birth. Sometimes the progress of gestation is difficult for some people. Sometimes the whole thing is very difficult. But at the end of the, the day, the process produces something that cannot come any other way. And that something is a precious new human being, which generally we look at it and we completely melt. It's just pure love. And I'm realizing as I'm saying this to you, what you are birthing. You are birthing a brand new <laughs> love towards yourself. I almost want to get emotional by saying this. And that is a process in and on its, in and on its own. Yeah, that's how I want to say it. It... Um, from what I gather energetically, it can be very overwhelming. Number one, you're not used to that kind of an attention. So not only are you not an attention getter, you are afraid of too much attention. For some of you, not enough for too much attention. Why would you be afraid of too much attention? if that's the case for you. 
So the point here is you are birthing a brand new you, but the birthing process is through the idea of discovering who you are. In other words, it comes through deep contemplation and it is through that contemplation that the new you begins to be born. And it is not so much that you are creating a new person. What is in fact happening is that you are experiencing the person you really are beyond the person. And that has you see things very differently. It expands the view you have of you and your entire world. Therefore, everything shifts as a result. It's called a process of enlightenment. So prepare. <laughs> how do I want to say this? You know how after a baby is born, people have baby showers, sometimes before, sometimes after they celebrate the baby. There is a time for celebration at the end of this birth. And the end of the birth is signified to me by a feeling you have about yourself the perception you hold within you about you. That is the final product. So if this was a baby, the baby would be called perception of me. And as you know, the way you are today, the person you call yourself, you, is a byproduct of a whole bunch of different circumstances and situations you have lived through over a period of time. So you've had a chance to get used to it to the point that a lot of that, it's in your bank memory somewhere, but you're not consciously thinking about it. So most of the things you claim yourself to be, you don't even think about. So therefore, you don't even think about if those claims are worth having. Sometimes being anxious is being on autopilot because you don't know any other way to be. And if that's the case, in your case, if you are always anxious about something, you are all, it's almost like you're always in a state of pre-approval, needing to be approved. That's really interesting connection. Oh my gosh, that's really interesting connection. For some of you, this enlightenment or this birth will come as you having awareness of the ability you have to create simply by the way you choose to look at things and how you feel towards them. In other words, what emotional connection you have attached to it. So if your um, anxiousness is born from a space of not feeling safe within you because you have been rejected or abandoned, then those are the aspects that you will, for some of you, very actively begin to heal. There will be, I see many opportunities being sprinkled in front of you in order for that to begin to happen. And it is because you begin to, something will get your attention. Something will get your attention. And generally, when something gets our attention, it seems to be out of norm. Think about it. When everything is always the same, it doesn't, things are just happening. You know, you don't think about it. When things are going sideways or, you know, kind of are out of the norm, that's what gets our attention, right? So something is going to get your attention over the next little while in order to help you see that within yourself, recognize a certain pattern and ask yourself this question. Is this still mine or am I continuing to think it is, but in actuality it is not because I know better. I'm not that person who used to be afraid. For most of you, it's a child. You're not that person anymore. Nonetheless, that inner child is still within you. It's calling the shots and it's calling the shots because it's afraid and it's modus operandum is I need to keep myself safe. Priority. 
So you're constantly searching for peace. Now think about it. If you are searching for peace, it presumes you don't have it, correct? Because if you had it, you wouldn't be searching for it. So the question is, where have you lost it? Because when you were born, you were peaceful. You didn't have any of these attachments. You have propensities to those attachments, but you those attachments had to be triggered into place by circumstances, vibrational exchange. Those are the questions you will be asking yourself over the next little while. Remember, the birth happens as a result of you knowing yourself. And by knowing yourself more, you are dropping density. You are you are rising, or you are rising in vibrations. You are uh, shifting in vibrations. The thing I heard very loud for you was, "Don't be afraid to be vulnerable." For some of you, this is literally about allowing people in or too close. It's like. Whenever somebody comes too close, you're freaking out. And you're freaking out because of your vulnerability. So understand what your vulnerability is. It is a fear-based perception you have. Okay? Now, we are all vulnerable species. We all have our vulnerabilities, certain vulnerabilities don't serve us anymore. In other words, they cloud the vision of who we really are, so they keep us stuck in the past. So when we talk about feelings, for example, allowing somebody in and your vulnerability may be, I'm scared of getting hurt. You're probably like 99.99999% of people in this universe who feel the same way. However, not everyone will react, if you will, to that fear in the same way. There will be varying degrees, right? So you need to decide if you are perhaps in the extreme side of that degree. If you are overprotecting yourself. Because if that's the case, you might want to understand the reason why is that little girl or that little boy still afraid to be seen? Why is she or he afraid of getting close? Or why does she need or he need a thick armor? What is the armor preventing things from happening? Ask yourself those questions. Those are key questions that are needing to be asked in order to help you shift vibrationally. It's all about awareness, remember. So some of you might want to start practicing letting your guard down a little. And I'm asking the question, what does that look like? Because Joanna is a very curious creature. Well, it means dropping or shifting or changing your expectations, or at least understanding and realizing what your true expectation is. And then depending on what that is, shift or change it. For example, if you are constantly focused on being afraid to fail, guess what you were more likely than not attract to you? It's no brainer, right? It's like a magnet. What you feel is what you attract to you eventually, right? And if that's the case, understand the reason why. Deeply understand the reason why. For those of you who know it, but you still continue to practice the same, ask yourself the question, what am I resisting? What am I resisting of letting go by practicing this behavior? Because no one is making you practice this. You're an autopilot, right? But now you recognize what the autopilot is and you're no longer on autopilot and you continue to do it. And if you're not on autopilot, then that means you're making the choice. So why do you continue to make that choice? And always, always, please, always ask these questions of yourself without judgment. This is not about discerning good or bad. This is about it being looked at from the perspective of an observer. Remember, Judgments will limit how you see things. When your ability to see is limited, 
your ability to attract certain things is limited as well because you will not be able to see them if they, even if they come to you. That requires you to shift, widen your perspective, your perception of yourself. You have. Okay? Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Now, I'm not talking about taking your clothes off and running off on the street. That would be crazy. And I would be the first person to tell you, what are you doing? Um, of course, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking in places where close relationships, uh, certain dynamics, work situations where you're being too afraid to say what you want to say in the fear of rejected or punished or whatever it is. We don't live in those worlds for the most part, for the most part. So vulnerability is based on the perception we have, right? It's worth reminding, even though I don't think I have to, but I'm going to anyway, because it feels like it wants to come out. You are not your body. You are not your mind. You are not your physicality. You are more than that. Your physicality, including your mind, is serving you right now for whatever function you wanted to experience by being a physical being. Start from that perspective. Even just accepting that perspective shifts things a little bit. Because it presumes, or there is an assumption, that it, whatever it is that you are experiencing is happening for a reason. It's not just a bunch of stuff you are experiencing that is abs that, that, that just is a waste. There is no such thing. It doesn't exist. Nothing is a waste. Everything is information. Everything is frequency. And frequency, as you know, cannot be destroyed. It can only be shifted in its appearance, if you will, in its density. And we are becoming much less dense human beings, which mean you, I, everyone, at some point will decide to drop the aspects of ourselves that are keeping us in a denser vibration. That requires letting go of something. What are you afraid of letting go of? Or what are you afraid to let go of? Yeah. What is it that is so something you cannot live without that you're so afraid of letting it go? And I just heard someone say to me, what if I prove to myself that I'm right? Okay, then what? What are you gonna do with it? The choice still remains. What are you gonna do with it? What are you gonna do with what you discover? Remember, you always have a choice. It is no longer too enough to just know why is something happening? Why is something happening? But go deeper deeper to the layers of understanding and deeply understand how is this serving me right now? If you are stuck on something, if you are, have a pattern that you just can't seem to oh, let go of, it's like you're holding on to it for dear life because it's not holding off. It's not holding off onto you. You're holding on to it. You have the power. It has no power except you keep saying it does. It's like there's a role reversal you are playing with whatever those aspects of you are. You're the one in charge. You're practicing otherwise. Remember, the more power you give a fear, the more the fear will have power over you. It's important to remember that. That does not mean that fears are not valid. Of course they are. If they were not valid, they would not exist. Everything has its place in the universe. Everything. Some things I, as Joanna, will never be able to accept. Or there will be a part of me that will never accept certain things. Abuse of animals is one of them. Even though I have the spiritual side that sees the bigger picture and I see the love in everything, there is a human aspect of me that will never be able to understand it. And I'm okay with that. That is my flaw, if you will, but I accept it. I accept it. I, I'm not going to push that part away from me. 
what I just said here is all about acceptance, self-acceptance. When you begin to self-accept or love yourself more by recognizing that everything about you is exquisitely amazing, Everything that is you is unique and different and there is nothing and no one like you and ever will be or ever was. You're that distinct. Okay? If you can accept that from the spiritual perspective, from the higher perspective, you will begin to shift how you think. You will begin to pause before you react. You will begin to go deeper sooner rather than later. And those are the things that will allow you to set yourself free because that's what you're after. You're after a freedom, sense of freedom you feel within you. What does freedom feel like? Well, I don't know what it feels like to you. I imagine it to feel amazing in every which way. And what I see is something really interesting. There is a certain responsibility that comes with freedom. And I'm going, hmm, I've never observed that. And one of the things that I'm seeing here is seeing things from a high, high perspective. And then coming down and giving that perspective to someone else in order to convince them. And I know that when I do this, it's 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 not it that's not how it works. That's really interesting. It's um not everybody will understand your version of freedom and that is up to them to decide, not up to you. You need to decide what freedom is to you and follow it to the best of your ability. Does not mean there's no compromises. But your idea of freedom may not be same as somebody else's idea of freedom. And if it's not a match, then you have to decide what is important to you, what's more important. Oftentimes you can come into a compromise. But if you overcompromise yourself again, you are again losing your freedom. So for some of you, this is around some sort of a decision you're gonna make, okay? Let go of the ideas that you are not enough. Keep on remembering on a conscious level that you are more than enough and logically you know it. You tell yourself all the time, you look in the mirror and you say, I affirm to yourself, I am enough. Logically, yes, you might be there. But if you're still stuck in patterns that tell you otherwise means you're not embodying that. That's okay. It's a process. Remember, recognition is what leads you to freedom. Recognition of something is what leads you eventually to freedom from it. Providing you practice the steps that leads to the freedom. Whatever freedom means to you. And that's for you to decide. Not for someone else. It's for you to decide. No one can dictate how you live but you. Thank God we don't live in those days anymore. Most of us. Okay. So your idea of freedom really is illusion because you already have it to a certain extent uh, in a form of being a being with, with human being with, with laws and all that kind of stuff. You are free now. So if you are not free, why can't you feel it? What's standing in the way? It's you. Mostly it's you. It's you. It's me. That's how it works. So this is about how you understand how deeply you understand yourself over the next few months. February and March are transition times for you, and I think they're for most people. But this is a transition time, so take the time and the effort to know yourself well. Don't be ashamed of the things you've done in the past that didn't work. Everything works out the way it's supposed to, even if you feel something didn't work out. There is value in that from a higher perspective, from a higher perspective. And that's where we're going, towards a higher perspective. All right, with that said, I feel um, that's all I've got. 
Thank you so much for listening, for liking, for sharing, for subscribing. Um, if you would like the six month version videos, that link is down below. Of course, if you wanna uh, connect with me, I would love to do that. That information is down below. Have yourself a wonderful new year, wonderful month of January. Come back to these once in a while and listen, if anything comes and looks you in the face, go, okay, I'm ready for you. Let's go. I wish you best of luck. Take care.